In the last lecture, we defined what is meant by a power series and we proved that a power series converges absolutely in its disk of convergence. We also remarked that a power series behaves very similar to polynomials in its disk of convergence. We begin this lecture by proving that a power series is holomorphic in its disk of convergence and that just like in the case of polynomials, we can uh, obtain the derivative by differentiating the power series term by term. So, let us begin by stating down the theorem. Theorem. Let summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n uh, be, so let f of z equal to be the be a power series around z naught with uh, a disk with a radius of convergence r. So, recall that uh, summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n converges in d z 0 r and the limit is what is being captured by f of z. So, in particular f is now a function from d z 0 r into the complex numbers. Then this function f is holomorphic. Where is it holomorphic? It is holomorphic precisely in d z 0 r and it is and the derivative f prime of z is given by the power series summation n a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1 <coughs> which has the same radius of convergence as the power series we started off with which has a radius of convergence r. So, notice that the theorem is actually capturing all that I said is holomorphic on dz 0 r not just that we obtain uh, the derivative f prime at any point z by differentiating summation a n times z minus z 0 to the power n term by term. Let us give a proof of this theorem. We will not be uh, let us uh, first check that this power series that we have written down here, this particular power series, uh, it indeed has a radius of convergence r. We will bother about whether it is the derivative or not later. Let us first focus on that particular power series. So, let us give a proof by considering by let us begin by considering the power series summation n a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1. This is term n is equal to 1 to infinity. Just rewriting it, we can say that this is n equal to 0 to infinity n plus 1 a n plus 1 z minus z 0 to the power so, what is the uh, radius of convergence of this? Then r prime, <coughs> which is the limb in as n goes to infinity of mod of n plus 1 a n plus 1 to the power minus of 1 by n. This is precisely the radius of convergence of uh, the power series written here. Our goal is to show that r is equal to r prime. To do that, let me first uh, give you an exercise from uh, your real analysis course. It is, it is to show that limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 to the power 1 by n is equal to 1. Yeah, you may mimic the proof. Uh, used to prove that n to the power 1 by n converges to 1 and tweaking it you will be able to prove it. So, let me leave this as an exercise for you. The 
claim which we will be proving is that uh, let r0 be equal to lim in as n goes to infinity of the second term a n plus 1 to the power minus of 1 by suppose this number is equal to r0 then r0 is equal to r it is the same as the radius of convergence of the power series we started off with. Let us give a proof of this. Let us first prove that r0 is less than or equal to r and uh, in order to prove this consider the power series that we started off with. Summation a n z minus z0 to the power n. This is the power series we started off with and uh, this can be rewritten as a0 plus z minus z0 times summation a n uh, z minus z0 to the power n minus 1, n is going from 1 to n. Now for z in d z0 r0, for z in d z0 r0, what do we know about uh, the power series that we have just underlined. This particular power series as you can note has a radius of convergence r0. So, here r0 this particular point z is in a disk of radius r0 around z0 and uh, in particular this series converges right. Hence, summation mod a n z minus z 0 to the power n. This is less than or equal to mod of a 0 plus mod of z minus z 0 times summation mod a n mod z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1. And we know that this converges and hence this, conver this particular series as well converges. This implies that summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n converges in fact absolutely in d z 0 r 0. But that immediately tells us that r 0 is supposed to hence be less than or equal to capital R. Because for every point in the discovery radius r 0 around z naught the series converges and we know that uh, outside the closed disk of radius r summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n diverges. So, r 0 is necessarily less than or equal to r. Let us now prove the reverse inclusion. In order to prove the reverse inclusion let us consider some point uh, z in d z. So, let us begin by considering some point z in d z 0 r. This means that summation an z minus z0 to the power n converges, isn't it? Let me now write down summation a n z minus z0 to the power n minus 1. So, for uh, z not equal to z0, let us also put in this extra assumption because for z0 we know that it uh, is equal to the constant term. Uh, so, for z not equal to z not, what do we know? This is uh, less than or equal to 1 by mod of maybe let me put an absolute value. This is z minus z not into summation a n z minus z not to the power n, where n is from 1 to infinity. Well, we have just used the triangle inequality here to be precise. So, we use the triangle inequality to maybe I should not skip steps. Let me just write down all the steps so that there is no lack of clarity. This is less than or equal to summation mod a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1. But <clears throat> remember that uh, we know what do we know? We know that summation a n z minus z naught to the power n. This converges absolutely. 
because uh, z belongs to dz0 r and therefore we can write this this is from 1 to infinity so this is uh, equal to 1 by mod z minus z naught times summation n is equal to 1 to infinity a n mod z minus z 0 to the power n we can now further add uh, uh, positive term to this and write this as well this this inequality or this equality rather this equality rather comes up because summation an z minus z0 to the power n converges absolutely this actually is an equality so I need to write it as an inequality. so this is equal to this which is in particular less than or equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity mod a n z minus z 0 to the power n which converges and mod z minus z 0 is just some constant. So, this implies that summation a n so this is from n equal to 1 to infinity or n equal to 0 to infinity of a n plus 1 z minus z 0 to the power n converges in d z 0 r. But we know that R0 is the radius of convergence of this particular power series and therefore this implies that R is less than or equal to R0 and hence both the inequalities imply that R is supposed to be equal to R0. So what have we established? All the uh, work was to establish this particular claim, the claim that the limit as n goes to infinity of or a n plus 1 to the power minus 1 by n is precisely equal to r. So, now we have uh, a sequence. So, another exercise for you. This is also a basic real analysis uh, exercise. Let a n and b n be, maybe I should not use a n and b n might be confusing. It's just an exercise. This, are, this is just a general exercise. These ANs need not be confused with uh, the uh, coefficients which I have written above. Let AN and BN be positive uh, real numbers such that AN converges to A where a is a positive number. So, as of now we are in real number, in the real setting, uh, a is positive and suppose the limit as n goes to infinity of b n is equal to b. Then the exercise demands that we prove the following limit as n goes to infinity of a n times b n is equal to a times b n. This is precisely the setting we are currently in. Observe that n to the power n plus 1 to the power uh, 1 by n converges to 1 and the limit is exactly equal to r. Limit of mod a n plus 1 to the power minus 1 by n. And therefore, the limit of n plus 1 into mod a n plus 1 to the power minus 1 by n will also be equal to 1 times r which is equal to r. So, applying the exercise by using this exercise we may conclude, we can conclude that the radius of convergence of the power series summation n a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1 where n is from 1 to infinity is r. Okay, so we have done half of the job. The other half is to prove that indeed the derivative of the power series we started off with is indeed this particular power series.
To do that, let's consider uh, f of z the Newton coefficient. Now, consider the quotient, not coefficient, Newton quotient. Basically, f of z minus f of uh, let's try to prove the uh, the derivative at a point z1 as being equal to the uh, expression given by this power series. So, fix z1 in dz0 r and we will be looking at this quotient. This is the quotient we are interested in and we will take a limit as it goes to z1. Uh, in dz0 r minus z1. But before we talk about limit, let us see what this uh, quotient will look like. This is going to be the sum a n z minus z0 to the power n minus z1 minus z0 to the power n by z minus z1. We can write it in this manner precisely because summation a n z minus z naught to the power n converges to f of z and summation a n z 1 minus z naught to the power n converges to f of z, f of z 1. Because these two series converge to respectively f of z 1 and f of uh, f of z and f of z 1, f of z minus f of z 1 precisely becomes the series to the right. Now, let us do the uh, basic arithmetic to conclude that this is going to be summation a n times this is n equal to 0 to infinity and each of these will reduce to the following. <coughs> n minus 1 plus z minus z 0 to the power n minus 2 times z 1 minus z 0 going all the way up to z1 minus z0 to the power n minus 1. Notice that the z minus z1 cancels with z minus z0 minus z1 minus z0 which is equal to z minus z1. Now, we shall show that uh, the limit as z goes to z1 of this summation exists. To prove that uh, it, we cannot just take the limit inside uh, the summation. So, what is our goal? Goal. So, we want to show that limit as z goes to z1 where z belongs to dz naught comma r minus z1 of summation a n times z minus z naught to the power n minus 1 plus I will not write all the intermittent terms let me just write it this way this is equal to summation n a n z 1 minus z naught to the power n minus 1. This is precisely what we would like to show and uh, if we can interchange the summation and the limit then we would be able to establish what, what we want to show. However, that is more subtle let us uh, justify that we can indeed interchange the uh, sum and the limit. And in order to do that, let us define the function g of z to be exactly this function. Summation yeah, so let me just do it from 1. So, for n is equal to 0, uh, z minus z0 to the power 0 is 1, z1 minus z0 to the power 0 is also 1, the terms cancel out. So, the sum indeed starts from n equal to 1 and therefore, let me define g of z to be equal to n from 1 to infinity a n z minus z0 to the power n minus 1 plus z minus z0 to the power n minus 2 times z1 minus z0 plus all the way up to z1 minus z0 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so let uh, 
R1 and R2 be such that mod of Z1 minus Z0 is less than R1, which is less than R2, which is less than capital R. So, Z1 is in the disk of radius uh, R around Z0. So, there are certainly, uh, you can certainly take uh, R1 and R2, two positive real numbers which satisfy this condition. Also, let epsilon be such that dz1 epsilon is contained in dz0 r1. So, dz1 epsilon is a small disk around z1 such that you know it is contained in the smallest of the disks of radius r1, r2, r3 or whichever you consider the smallest is r1. So, it is contained in r1. Let us now uh, study what we can talk about the uh, the terms which appear here. Let us analyze each of those terms. And then we will be able to conclude that mod of a n z minus z naught to the power n minus 1 plus z minus z naught to the power n minus 2 times z 1 minus z naught to the power uh, 1 plus up to z1 minus z0 to the power n minus 1. Each of these, the first thing to conclude is that this is certainly less than or equal to mod of a n times n into r1 to the power n minus 1. This is certainly something which we can conclude because z and z1 both are inside the disk of radius r1 around z1. So, the distance is certainly less than or equal to r1 and there are n terms which feature over there. We also know that the limb of mod a n to the power minus 1 by n is equal to r and therefore, there exists capital N such that so this is since limb n going to infinity of mod a n to the power minus of 1 by n is equal to r and r2 is less than r, we have an n such that for all n greater than capital N mod of a n to the power minus of 1 by n is greater than r2. Because if it was not the case, the limit would have been uh, uh, less, less than or equal to r2. So, this is certainly getting satisfied and uh, rewriting this, this tells us that mod of a n is less than 1 by r 2 to the power n. That is good because if you go up, what this tells us is, so this is uh, what we would like to focus on right now, that will be bounded, so let me not write it again and again, it is a big expression. This is less than or equal to n times r1 by r2 to the power n. Notice that r1 by r2 is uh, less than 1 and uh, summation n times r1 by r2 to the power n converges. And by Weistress m test, hence by Weistress m test, summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus 1 plus z minus z 0 to the power n minus 2 times z 1 minus z 0 and so on this. Okay, this is all true. Okay, let me finish it and then tell you where this is all true. This is all true. Notice that this is all true when z is uh, in dz0, in dz1 epsilon, right. So, let me see where that, uh, that should be put into, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. Let z be in dz1 epsilon, then there is no confusion, all these things go through and we have this result as well.
So this converges uniformly in B Z one epsilon. Remember, this is the exact domain where our G of Z was defined, right? So it converges uniformly to G of Z. Being a limit of continuous functions, G of Z is also a uniform limit of continuous functions. G of Z is a continuous function. Since G of Z is continuous, we have limit Z going to Z1 of G of Z is equal to G of Z1. And that's precisely what we want to prove, isn't it? Because G of Z1, if you notice, this translates into the following, i.e. limit Z going to Z1, Z in D, Z0, R minus Z1 of f of z minus f of z1 by z minus z1. This is equal to g of z1 which is equal to summation n a n z minus z0 to the power n z1 minus z0 to the power n minus 1. And that is precisely what we were trying to prove. The choice of three point Z1 was arbitrary. We can say that uh, it's complex differentiable at every point uh, in BZ0R and hence thus F of Z given by summation A n Z minus Z0 to the power n is holomorphic on DZ0R. So for sure we know that in this discovery radius R it converges. Let us now look at some consequences of the theorem that we have proved. This theorem actually we have proved quite a lot uh, in this theorem. Uh, one of the first corollaries is uh, that we can get hold of the coefficients explicitly in terms of the derivatives of this. So let f of z be equal to summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n uh, be defined on b z 0 r where let f of z be this on b z 0 r where r is the radius of convergence of this part series. Then we have an explicit expression for the coefficients. A n is given by f n of z by n factorial. <coughs> Let us give a proof. So, the first observation in the course of this proof is to notice that if we have a power series summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n, we look at its derivative, the uh, the complex derivative that will also turn out to be a holomorphic function which is a power series whose radius of convergence is again r and by applying the theorem to the derivative again we get to conclude that the derivative is also holomorphic so in particular a power series is infinitely differentiable we can differentiate a power series to any order and we explicitly know what the power series will look like that is the first exercise that I would like to give for proving this corollary. Prove that fn of z, let me give you an explicit expression for that. This is going to be equal to summation n, okay, fm of z. the nth derivative of f is n into n minus 1 into n minus m into z 
into a n into z minus z zero to the power n minus m, where n is going from m to infinity. Let's just be careful. What if uh, m is equal to one? Yeah, so there is a mistake. This should be n minus m plus one. The proof of this particular exercise can be uh, done by uh, an induction argument, which I will leave it to you. We have already seen what f1 is, and we know the explicit expression for f1, and from that we can get hold of f2 and so on. So let me leave this as an exercise for you to check that this is indeed the case. Okay, what is the uh, corollary talking about? The corollary is saying that the coefficients a n is in terms of uh, the derivatives of f given by f n of z by f n of z naught by so yeah, maybe I made a mistake. I should stress upon uh, the fact that this is being evaluated at z naught. I had not written it correct earlier. Now this is the right expression. So if uh, we want to capture the constant term here, f m at z naught, that will be when n is equal to m in the right hand side. So this is just going to be m into m minus 1 into up to m minus m minus 1, which is 1 into a m. And this is precisely equal to m factorial times a m. All other terms will uh, vanish. And this gives us that a m is equal to f m of z naught by m factorial. So the power series is uh, completely captured. The coefficients of the power series is completely captured by the derivatives of f evaluated at z uh, Another corollary to the corollary given above is that if g of z is a power series around z naught, summation b n z minus z naught to the power n, g of z is equal to f of z in a small neighborhood of uh, z naught. Suppose we start off with some other power series, summation b n z minus z zero to the power n, such that, oh, what is f naught, where f of z is the usual power series we were considering all along, a n into z minus z naught to the power Suppose we, mm, we know that this is equal, both these power series are equal in a neighborhood of z naught. Then the conclusion is that a n is equal to b n. The proof is just one line. It is to notice that if f is equal to g in a neighborhood of z naught, the, the uh, derivative calculation of derivative is a local property since f of z is equal to g of z in say d z0 epsilon for some epsilon positive we have fn of z is equal to fn at z0 is equal to gn at z0 for all n in epsilon numbers. And this tells us that a n is equal to b n. Since a n is equal to f n at z naught by n factorial and b n is g n at z naught by n factorial. And that completes the proof. So the coefficients are the same if two parts. So the power series are the same. Basically, that's what it says. Hmm. This is a special version of what is called as the identity theorem which tells us that if two power series agree in a, in a in an open set, then it should necessarily be the same. The power series uh, are equal means that the coefficients are the same and that's what this theorem is. We'll prove a much stronger version of this theorem later, but this is the first, first and the most basic version we can, we can get. Let's calculate the uh, derivative of the, of some of the standard uh, holomorphic functions we had defined earlier or 
which was defined in fact in it, it was defined in terms of a power series so consider e to the power z which is equal to summation z to the power n by n factorial we are just going to differentiate e to the power z and we know that this is going to be term by term differentiation the zero n equal to zero term vanishes and we are going to end up with z to the power n minus 1 into n by n factorial which is going to be n minus 1 factorial which is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity of z to the power n by n factorial which is again e to the power and with the laws of calculus what was sine of z sine of z was e to the power i z minus e to the power minus of i z by 2i and d by dz of sine of z we know what the expression would be that is this going to be equal to e to the power i z plus e to the power i minus i z by 2 which is equal to cos of z you can check that d by dz of cos of z is minus of sine Let us conclude this lecture by discussing product of power series. We know that uh, from a real uh, course on real analysis uh, and Merton's theorem, we know that if we have a, an absolutely convergent uh, series and uh, series another series which is converging, then its Cauchy product also converges to the product of the limits. We'll recall the proof here uh, for the sake of completion, even though it has been something which was covered in a real analysis course especially because we want to talk about product of power series so let me write it down as a proposition let f of z be equal to summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n so uh, the limit is from 0 to infinity if i am not writing it writing the limits it means that it is from 0 to infinity and g of z be equal to summation a n z minus z naught to the power n be power series which converges in d z 0 r. So that means the radius of convergence of both these power series is at least r then so let f of z g of z is given by the power series summation c n z minus z naught to the power n where c n is equal to summation a k the n minus k where k is from 0 to 1, which also has uh, a radius of convergence at least r. Which also has a radius of convergence. I'm only talking about at least r. Let us give a proof of uh, this statement. Let me read the statement out for you once more. It says the following. If you have two power series expressions, summation a n into z minus z 0 to the power n and g of z is summation a n into summation with that I read it back, summation b n into z minus z 0 to the power n. If you have two such power series, then the product, the Cauchy product which is given by this power series where c n is expressed in this manner this is going to be uh, a power series which will also converge in a disk of radius r let us give a proof of this this is basically a proof uh, of the mertens theorem but let us recall it for the sake of completeness what we know is that both these series converge absolutely we actually do not need the entire strength of both the uh, power series converging absolutely 
nevertheless so notice that uh, for z in d z0 r summation a n z minus z naught to the power n converges absolutely both this and summation b n z minus z naught to the power n both of them converge absolutely let us give the partial sum sum partial sums i mean so let a capital a n be equal to summation a n z minus z 0 to the power of oh, a k z minus z 0 to the power k where k is from 0 to small n we know that a n converges to f of z uh, let us call something here similarly b n b summation b k z minus z 0 to the power k where k goes from 1 0 to n c n similarly it is defined this is basically uh, c k z minus z 0 to the power k k is equal to 0 to n our goal is to show that c n converges to f times g at z so the z is fixed so for z in dz0 r a fixed z in dz0 r is where we are doing all this analysis and uh, what do we have let's elaborate the capital c n here this is just going to be equal to a0 b0 plus a1 b0 plus a0 b1 times z minus z0 going on up to a n b0 plus a n minus 1 b1 plus a0 b n z minus z0 to the power n. If we capture the like terms, what do we have? This is going to be equal to a0 into b0 plus b1 z minus z0. So, this is going to be a0 times bn plus or maybe let me write it as bn times a0 plus bn minus 1 times a1 into z minus z0 going on up to bn into sorry, b0 into a n z minus z0 to the power n. It is just a rearrangement of terms that was done to write it like this. Okay. Let d n slowly running short of alphabets. This is going to be what is this? This is basically b n minus g of z. Let us define d n to be b n minus g of z. And this is just going to tell us that the above expression will be g of z into a0 plus a1 into z minus z0 plus up to a n into z minus z0. And adding and subtracting g z, this is just going to be d n times a0 plus dn minus 1 times a1 into z minus z0 all the way up to d0 uh, an z minus z0 to the power n. So, we are now ending up with these two expressions. Notice that the first one is just g of z times capital a n plus d n a 0 plus up to d 0 a n z minus z 0 to the power. If we manage to show that 
the thing inside this bracket converges to 0 as n goes to infinity, then we know that a n converges to f of z and therefore, so this is notice that this is equal to c n and therefore, limit as n goes to infinity of c n will turn out to be equal to g of z times f of z. So, the only thing that we have to show is that this term inside the bracket here indeed converges to 0. Let us focus on that term. Consider d n a 0 plus d 1 a 1 into d n minus 1 rather z minus z 0 plus up to d 0 a n z minus z 0 to the power n. What is that d n converges to 0? Because d n is basically d n minus g and uh, therefore, given epsilon positive, there exists a capital N such that d n is less than epsilon. This is certainly the case. And therefore, if you look at the absolute value of d n a 0 plus up to d 0 a n z minus z naught to the power n, let us break this into 2. This is going to be less than or equal to, let me just reverse the order and write it in a slightly different manner. This is going to be uh, d 0 a n z minus z 0 to the power n plus up to d n capital N z minus z 0 to the power capital N. Oh. A n minus capital N z minus z 0 to the power n minus capital N. This term plus the remaining terms that will be the n plus 1 a n minus n plus 1 z minus z 0 to the power n plus 1 all the way up to d n a 0 right by applying triangle inequality again and noticing that mod d n plus 1 is all less than epsilon, this is going to be less than or equal to mod of d 0 times mod of a n z minus z 0 to the power n the first part. Let me just leave it uh, as of now, let me just leave it exactly like that, not touch it now. But what follows is of interest. Here, this will be less than epsilon times, let me just say that this is going to be less than mod a 0 z minus z 0 to the power n, certainly going to be less than this. Let us call this, so here it will be, here it is just a finite sum, but uh, I am going to put in a 0 to infinity here using the fact that our uh, uh, series converges absolutely to some number, let us call this equal to alpha. So, this tells us that mod d n a 0 plus d 0 a 1. So, what was this? Ah, d 0 d 0 a n z minus z 0 to the power n. This is less than or equal to mod d 0 mod a n into z minus z 0 to the power n plus all the way up to d capital N z minus z 0 to the power n minus capital N, so there is an a n here. plus epsilon times alpha. So, notice that now on the right hand side we have capital N expressions of this type. So, I think I should be a little careful here. This is going to be uh, D capital N A N minus capital N mod Z mod of this Z minus Z 0 to the power N minus capital N plus epsilon times alpha. So, notice that each of these terms which I am now underlining in green, there are capital N such terms, each of them go to 0 since these are terms which are featuring in the power series summation a n z minus z 0 to the power. So, as n goes to infinity, each of these terms go to 0 and therefore, what we are ending up is that limit 
as n goes to infinity of d n a zero plus up to d zero a n z minus z zero to the power n is less than or equal to epsilon times alpha, where alpha is some fixed number, positive real number. But our choice of epsilon was arbitrary, and therefore we have this limb soup as n goes to infinity of mod d n a zero plus up to d zero a n z minus z zero to the power n is equal to zero. But then we are considering a sequence of uh, non-negative numbers, and therefore the limit also is greater than or equal to zero, and therefore the limit has to be necessarily equal to zero, and that's precisely what we had to prove, which gives that the limit as n goes to infinity of the term is equal to zero. And that would tell us. Let me just go up and show that uh, we were interested in proving that this term goes to zero precisely because we had shown that our C n turned out to be like uh, an expression like this. Where is the expression? Ah, this is the expression. So this is our C n if you notice. This is precisely the expression for C n that we have and limit as n goes to infinity of C n is what we are interested in. And we have shown that this is indeed converging to f of z times b of z. So, the broader scheme of things, what have we proven? We have proven that for z in b z zero r, the Cauchy product does indeed converge, and it converges to f of z times g of z. So, yes, this power series it has a radius of convergence at least r because for every z in b z zero r, we have shown that it converges to f of z times g of z, and that's precisely what we had to prove. Let me just say that this implies that limit n going to infinity of c n is equal to f of z times g of z. And with that, we are done.